Hi everybody, welcome back to the Weekly Huddle Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton McCuller, and actually in the same room for me for once is my yeah. co-host, Christian Tabor. Yeah, no more Skype. No. That's enough of that. Enough of that. That was, that the, the audio quality was hit or miss. Not good. <laughs> Weren't you recording out of like an Alexa last time? Uh, it was not an Alexa, it was my old phone. Oh, your old phone? It was phone? a Samsung Galaxy S7. Oof. Rough time. That Rough hasn't times. been used in like a year. So. <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, I was wondering why you sounded like a robot that had epilepsy or something. It's Just fine. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, so we have maybe not one of our longer episodes on today, but still one that should be interesting. We uh, so let's start out with a little bit of you know news. Um, hey, Christian, you're a Bills fan, right? Yeah, yeah. You know Cam Newton signed with the Patriots. Yeah, I know. aren't you happy? I mean, I'm not worried. You're not. I'm not that worried. Why not? I don't know. Just something's telling me, like, don't be that. It's gonna be fine. Like, it's gonna be like Cam still has to maneuver through our defense, regardless. With a Patriots team that that is fair. His supporting uh, cast is pretty terrible. Yeah, in the Patriots doesn't but, really catch my eye that much. Yeah, but then again, it is Belichick. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> Belichick. <laughs> Belichick had uh, Matt Castle and went eleven and five. If you can take. I mean, they're going to have, like, I know Cam's, like, on the wrong side of 30 now, but, like, if he... Now that's a new element, because when you had Brady, you didn't have to worry about scrambling. Right. You had to worry about just him sitting in the pocket, and then everyone's like, oh, the big thing to be Brady, interior pressure, interior pressure. He doesn't have a pocket to step up in. Now when Cam's outside of the pocket every five seconds, you don't... Now you have to run a spy, too, so you have to drop one less out of coverage. Part of me also feels like he's going to get injured. I don't know. Okay. I don't... I like, I like Cam as a player. He's a little annoying as a person, but I don't wish injury on him, but I kind of think he will something do. Something tells me he's going to get injured. I don't want him to get injured. I like him, like, either way. Mm-hmm. But Yeah, I, I, mean. I, I had that feeling, too. But I don't want to be like, oh, it's going to be fine. He's going to get hurt. And then when he doesn't get hurt and wins MVP, I'm just going to be sitting there like, yeah. we were saying we were going to win the division. <laughs> then Cam Newton happened. And it was Cam Newton's time. Yeah, Sorry. I mean the Patriots defense still lost like seven starters, so I'm not that afraid. Also, Stephon Gilmore got cooked by John Brown last year. We're just not going to talk about that though. Uh, so I'm not too afraid of the Patriots as a team as a whole. It's right. just now with Cam as a quarterback, they have another dimension. That's saying if Jared Sidden doesn't win the job over Cam, Cam could come in and not be what they thought he was, and then get cut or Jared Sidden wins then the job. Then it's going to be exactly how we thought it was going to be. Right. So either, either way. So either way, it's either Jared Siddham gets the starting job and it's back to how we were feeling before this, or Cam wins it and we're just hoping to God he doesn't reform go back to his old form. Basically. So yeah, I mean I was I was I was a little angry yesterday, but uh you've talked me into being a little more I mean I also saw a thing that said all the Cam signing does is um make them win like a couple more games than they would have with Stidham. And then they just get a higher draft pick, which kind of fucks them a little bit. Yeah. The 2021 draft class is really good, supposedly. Oh, trust me. Yeah, it is. Okay. It is. So, trust me. It is yeah. amazing. Uh, yeah, but that goes away if they win a freaking Super Bowl. Well, yeah. But if they're if, not going to win a Super Bowl. No, I don't think so either. Their oh. offense and defense is too I was going to say I'll put money on it, but I'm never going to put money against Belichick. So. No, but you'll put your body going through a table online against Drew Locke. Yeah. Drew Lock will be good now. Oh, that's just my body. <laughs> that's body. Not money. How much do you? How much do you get your body? Money can money? fix my body. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. If you don't know what we're referencing, the the last the last episode, uh, we put a bet. This is just to, just to set it in ice because it was a little chop. The apps was a little yeah. choppy overall. Yeah. The bet was if Drew Lock has a better season than Patrick Mahomes, I get to put Christian through a table. But if it's the opposite, I get to put him through a table. Are you going to be able to pick me up and put me through a table? I'm going to start lifting. <laughs> Get on the grind just to put me through a table. And like, Yeah. We're, we're not even going to go to the game. We're just going to pull up to the game, put someone through a table, and then leave. <laughs> dip. Yeah. We'll listen to that radio on the way back home, guys. Bye. Listen, I already got to start working out for if I do swim. That's fair. And then if I do rugby, I already got to. Oh, oh you, he, he got into your head about doing rugby now? Who? Tobias. I just always wanted to. I wanted to play football in college. I'm not going to a college that has football, so I got to do the next best thing. Your mom said football is too dangerous. You said 
screw you, Mom. I'm going to go do rugby, which is even more dangerous. <laughs> it's fine. Um, All right. Uh, second piece of news, AB is being looked at for, like, I think it's Seattle and Baltimore, I think, was the other one. I don't remember, but I know Seattle was definitely one who was all in on AB, which, I mean, they picked up Josh Gordon last year. So maybe if he goes to a – I mean, he was already on a good team in Pittsburgh. So it can't even be, like, because Oakland was shit. They can't be, like, oh, he just wanted – he was a cancer because Oakland was a terrible team. Because he was on a good team, was a cancer. Traded to a bad team, was a cancer. Wasn't on a team, was a cancer. So I don't know – I mean, Seattle's known for taking risks on guys like this, but I don't know if it's I mean, it's a part of me honestly wants AB to come back and be really good. Just to say F you to the league. <laughs> yeah, just to be like... Just because. Just because. I feel like that would be fun, but, I mean, I feel like if someone signs him, it's just going to be like, oh. I don't know. I, I want Seattle to be sign him because if Seattle signs him, that offense will be crazy. True. But I also want them to sign him because if he... Last year's offseason was entertaining because of AB, right. because of all the, the stuff he pulled. So if he gets signed, I'm, I'm, it's basically a win-win for me because Seattle will be amazing, mm-hmm. or Seattle will be a dumpster, a tire fire media-wise, and then he'll get cut again. He Plus, was on the Patriots, he was still a cancer. I forgot he was on the Patriots yeah. for a game. He caught a touchdown. <laughs> Question. Uh, answer. Who would be the number one target, DK or AB? Uh, Doug Baldwin when he comes out of retirement. <laughs> um, probably A B just because he's better right now. I don't know. He hasn't played football for a year. D K was good. He had like what was it nine hundred yards last season, so he was good. I just I think D K is only gonna get better. I feel like D K would still be the number one. I feel like D K would be more of a deep threat. Oh yeah, definitely. He's definitely one of those. And then A B would kind of be more like. Intermediate. A B is like that intermediate, can you know, after catch, right? DK just runs a straight line, and if you try to you know stop him, he bull rushes you. So I mean, yeah. And then they have other guys. I don't even know Tyler Lockett. They have other wide receivers. Tyler Lockett's one of the best deep threats in the league, according to PFF. He's like number two overall because of like his it's like depth of target and catch rate on depth. It's like. Some weird stat that's, you know, like, remember like how you said it was, like, forced fumbles on third down by running yeah. backs that had less than 300 snaps? <laughs> it's, like, that kind of stat where it's, like, catches on deep balls. It was catches made on catchable plays on deep balls or something like that. And Tyler Lockett, it was Michael Thomas and Tyler Lockett and then Stephon Diggs. Just the most PFF stat you could get. Yeah, it is just the most <laughs> deep ball PFF stat ever. <laughs> PFF being PFF, right? Yeah, basically. I almost worked for them. That was that was it. Really? Yeah, I, I had a thing where I was trying out. I would, I would watch film, and then I would like record like this player was in this position for this play, and I always waited the last minute to turn in my stuff, so I would always rush it, and I didn't get enough accuracy. So they didn't give me that, but they offered me another job, another tryout for a job where it was basically like, person A catches the ball at this yard line, gains this many yards. On this play, so it was like stat tracking. Yeah. I didn't even do that one because I was like, "This is unneeded stress and stupid." And I just was like, "I'm I'm I'm over the whole PFF thing." And I knew that PFF was getting a negative reaction right. around then, so I was like, "I'm not. I'm gonna just step back. I don't wanna. I'll do my own right. thing." And then this happened, <laughs> so I think it worked out in the end. Yeah. Um, we have a game for us to play. We do have a game for us to play. We have a game. Uh, if you who's the, what's the Instagram account on wh- that we found these on? Oh, you have to go on your phone. Oh right, you're recording it. <laughs> <laughs> so while you're pulling that up, I'll explain. So there's an Instagram account. I believe it's SBE. Yeah, yeah. SBE yeah. football, and they have a bunch of guess that player, um, like games on it. So we're gonna do. I think I found nine of them. If you think you can scroll through and find, I will find as many as I can. Uh, so yeah, what we're, what we're going to be doing is looking at these guests that player. We'll read off like what team for what year, and then all right. So here's our first one. All right. So it was I believe that's Central Michigan from 1993 to 1996. Then San Francisco from 1996 and 2003. Then Philadelphia from 2004 to 2005. Then Dallas from 2006 to 2008. 
Buffalo in 2009 and Cincinnati in 2010. I already know who this is. You already know who this is. I already know who this is. Do you know who it is? I'm going to let you guess because I already know the answer. I didn't even – not from reading the comments or anything. I just know because of the teams that were, that were just listed. Right. So what uh, – who do you think it would be? I feel like I definitely should know, and I feel like I do know, but I'm just blanking on the name. You should. Is it a wide receiver? It is a wide receiver. It is a wide receiver. He's one of the best wide receivers of all time. Yeah, yeah he is. Yeah, he is. I'm just yeah. blanking. And he signed for the Bills for one really weird year. Mm-hmm. I had his jersey. I remember that. Did, did we have – um, wasn't did we have Marshawn Lynch at that time too? Uh, we should have. It was two thousand nine. Maybe, maybe not. I don't I remember. remember. We had we had that receiver and we had Marshawn Lynch at the same time. And everyone and I remember looking at comments of that post that I saw it on and was like, why was this offense not good? And I was just like, <laughs> it's the Bills. Yeah, just because I think Fitzpatrick was our quarterback at the time. Yeah, yeah. That says everything you need to know. I'm so mad that I can't. He was on San Fran, yeah. then the Eagles, yeah. when they went to the Super Bowl, yeah. then I Dallas. Know. I know exactly who it is. I just can't he was on the Bills with Lee Evans. To the face. Here's the, all right. the problem. Here's, here's the hint that will probably solidify it. I had his jersey, and Evan, my brother, had Lee Evans' jersey because the last names were our names. Oh! <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That didn't make any sense. I was like, last. There's no player named McCuller. No, no. It was like, first, what? his his jersey was Lee Evans. Yeah, his name I was get Evan. That now, Terrell Owens. There you yeah. go. Smart I was, stuff. I was, I was, I was lost on the name. I knew exactly who it was and what they did and how they did. I knew everything about them except for their name. We were. I was talking. I was just. It's funny because I was just talking about this uh, a couple of days ago with my dad because he was like, he was trying to remember who T.O. played for. Because I was like, remember that time T.O. played for the Bills for a season? Mm-hmm. That was really weird. <laughs> like, I don't I, – like, I remember watching that season. Like, I wasn't, like, big into the, the Bills at that point. Right. But I was still watching football a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching it. I had – I didn't, it didn't, like, sink in that there was, like, this guy was playing for us. But now I think back on it, like, oh, yeah, he was a – he was a Bill for a hot second. <laughs> yeah. That was – that was weird. And then I, I forgot he was on the Bengals. I totally forgot he was even on the Bengals yeah, until you said – but once I hit the Bills and t- for one year, I was like, okay, Dallas Eagles. Um, this guy posts so much, so much. See, I have this all bookmarked. Oh, here we go. All right, so he's an active player and he's a special teams player. Okay. All right. Jaguars 2015 and 2017, Jets 2018, Seahawks 2019. I have no idea. <laughs> He's a special teams player. He's a special teams player. I have my guess, but I'm just gonna look at it real quick. It's this. He he he, he labeled this as difficult level intermediate. Intermediate level difficulty. Oh, okay. I just I just looked at the answer. So um, is it I, like an easy one, or is it one that like you should have known but you didn't, or is it? Uh, like- it's more of a. Now that I look at it, I get it, but not one that I would have been like, oh. Yeah, I'm 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 lost. He was a Pro Bowl level kicker for the Jets in 2018. That they cut and signed Kari Vedvik, and then Kari Vedvik was terrible. If that helps at all. Pro Bowl level kicker. You know, I'm still stumped. You're still stumped. I'm still stumped. Uh. All right, here's a hint. Who's the bad guy in Halloween? Who's the bad guy in Halloween? Yeah, who's the killer? I don't watch Halloween. Oh my <laughs> Jesus! His first name is Michael. Myers. Yeah. Same last name. Oh, him. Yeah. yeah. Jason Myers. Yeah. I don't know much about him. That's why. Okay. Next one. Active player, no. He's an offensive player, so he... All right. Okay. Vikings from 2009 to 2012. I already know who this is. Seahawks 2013 to 2014. Jets 2014. Bills 2015-2016. So the Tyrod years. I already know who this is. I don't even remember the Tyrod years. It was Tyrod's first ever pass touchdown was to him against the Colts. It was like a 50-something yarder. I remember watching that because I was like the like 2014 was the first season I ever like watched football like how I watch it now, and then that was the last that was when we had Kyle Orton at quarterback. Right. 2015 was when we had Tyrod and it was the gate week one against the Colts. Tyrod threw a touchdown like a 51 yarder to this guy. Mm-hmm. Um. If I say a, if I say a word, you might under, you might get it. Yeah, I started I started really getting into it like after that yeah. point. He's a wide receiver, and if I tell if I say I one assume so. if I say one word, you might you might get it. What is that one word? Concussion. 
Just a lot migraine even. The one time he sat out a game for Seattle or Minnesota because he had migraines. Who the hell does that? <laughs> Who does do that? <laughs> I don't know, I don't Tabor. Know. I don't. I don't know either. You, clearly. Give, you give up? I give up. It's Percy Harvin. Yeah, see, I wouldn't have guessed that. I'm not mad that I didn't know that because I wouldn't have guessed that. I I used to because back in like Madden 14, 13, he was like 99 overall halfback. He was either halfback or a wide receiver. He could never be one or the other. So, and I think in that year he was a halfback for the Vikings. So he had 99 overall Adrian Peterson, 99 overall Percy Harvin at running back. I was like, how, <laughs> how? And I would always try to trade for Percy Harvin every year until we got him actually in real life, and I realized, oh, he's terrible. <laughs> All right, here's the next one. Oh, I just killed it. All right, Broncos 2013 to 2017, Panthers 2018, Rams 2018, Lions 2019. So this past season, he was on the Lions. I had someone in mind, then the Lions threw me off. Who I had someone in mind, and then the Lions threw me off. Because I don't know. Broncos 2013 to 2017. So he was on the Super Bowl team. Then he went to the Panthers. It's not Lee Jackson. Lee Jackson went to the Jaguars. It's the Rams that helps me know who it is. But then the Lions just throws me off. Rams helps you? Yeah. Broncos yeah. to Rams. I don't know I don't know why this player I just I feel like I know. I have no idea. Like, I'm stumped. Oh, he's active and he's an offensive player. I forgot to mention that. That helps a little bit, actually. I didn't need Does that. it? I didn't need that. Running back. Oh! Yeah. Did you get it? I, I, oh, no, it's not no more, It's not no Sean Moreno. It's the other one. CJ. Yeah, CJ. Uh, CJ. Anderson. Anderson. That's who it is. The Lions just threw. I didn't know he I forgot he played for the Lions. I, I had no clue. He was the so So... Quick side note, my fantasy football league for that year he was on the Rams. Mm. For some for whatever reason, our fantasy football playoffs ran into the actual playoffs. And I signed CJ H- H- uh, Henderson because Todd Gurley got was getting hurt. Right. And he got me like thirty points every week in the playoffs. <laughs> and I won the whole thing. Cause of CJ Anderson. The dude was pissed. I'm like, that's your rule. You allowed me to sign him. <laughs> there was no cutoff date for signings and you allowed people to get played in the playoffs. So I, I won with CJ Anderson carried my football team. Shout out to you, CJ. I don't know if you actually watch anything on YouTube, but if you do, we're gonna, we'll tag you this on the Instagram post. Shout out to CJ. Shout out to CJ. Yeah, I knew for I knew Broncos, and then I saw Rams, and then when I Panthers saw, was kind of just like uh, like this is just extra reinforcement. Yeah, when you said running back, I thought of No. Sean Moreno first because I remember I always whenever I would come out of like playing hockey at the holiday, they would set the games up on TV. Right. And No. Sean Moreno was their running back for the longest time mm-hmm. on the Broncos, and then he kind of just disappeared. I didn't remember where he was, so I was thinking, thinking like, he could be, have been on league still last year. Like, I don't remember him, but, like, right. he also disappeared off the face of the earth, and I had no idea where he went. <laughs> All right. Miami, he's an active player. He's offensive. Uh, currently a free agent, I guess, because it says his last team was 2016. Hmm. So, 2007 to 2009 on Miami Dolphins. Was uh, 2019. 2019, so it was okay. the last season. Yeah. Uh, Miami, 2007 and 2009. San Fran, 2010 to 2012. Carolina, 2013. Arizona, 2014. Carolina, 2015-2016. Offensive player that went back and forth from Carolina to to Cardinals to Carolina again. Offensive? Offensive. What the? Why do I feel like it's a receiver? They wouldn't do an offensive lineman, right? <laughs> no. No, no. See, if it was, like, Bengals, then I would be like, oh, go on. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... Carolina to Arizona to Carolina. Like, I can... I want... I, okay, it's not John Brown. And then 2015 to 2016, so 2015 <laughs> is when is Super Bowl Super run. Super Bowl run. Yeah. When they lost. Yeah. He's offensive. Something's telling, yeah. Something's telling me wide receiver. I, it's not Ted Ginn, is it? Ted Ginn is on the Saint, was on the Saints after that. Unless they didn't include. Oh, current team isn't shown to make it a little more difficult. I'm guessing Ted Ginn. Ted Ginn Jr. is my guess. 
That's I, a good guess. I don't I feel even like. I, yeah, yeah. It's, that, it's yeah, easy. It it's it's it. level easy. It yeah, it's Ted Ginn. It's yeah. Ted Ginn. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I thought he just wasn't playing. He was a free agent. <laughs> but I read the, the description. It says current team isn't shown to make it a little more difficult. It was Ted Ginn. Because if it showed the current team, it would be even more easy. Yeah. If it was the Saints, I would have got <laughs> it like right away. But I knew he played for this. I remember he played for the Panthers. I don't remember him playing for the Dolphins or the 49ers. I remember him playing for the Panthers. I don't even remember. All I remember him for is Panthers Saints. I don't remember him for anything else. But I knew. I had the gut feeling it was wide receiver, and it was on the Panthers twice. And I knew Ted Ginn had two cents with the Panthers. Yeah, I had no, I had no idea he was like oh, Dolphin. I know who this one is. So it's 2010 to 2018 oh. is the Steelers. 2019 is the Raiders. 2019 is Patriots. We were just talking about him. Oh wait, it is him. I thought yeah. his offense is not active right now. I thought it was James Harrison for a second because he went to the Patriots. Right, he got cut by the Steelers. And went to the Patriots. But it's AB. Yeah, we're just talking. About <laughs> I'm a little I'm a little dumb here. <laughs> I, ju- I I just jumped to it. Oh, this one's a long one. Oh, Jesus. Active player. Oh, wait. I think I know who this is. Offensive player. So, 2002 to 2005, Arizona Cardinals. Okay. 2006, Detroit Lions. Okay. 2007, Oakland Raiders. 2008 to 2009, Carolina Panthers. 2011 to 2013, Chicago Bears. 2014, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 2015, 2016, Cleveland Browns. And 2017 to 2018, New York Jets. I think I know who it is. And is it offensive? Current team isn't shown. Current yeah. team isn't shown. Yeah, I can I can tell you who the current team is. Pretty sure it's the Eagles. Eagles. Yeah, I'm, from I'm gonna, Jets to Eagles. I'm gonna check to see if yeah, my if my answer is right. Yeah, it's right. Okay, I got it right. Went from Jets to Eagles. Do you want to you want another hint? I want to think. I want to think. 2019, he was on the Eagles. He might still. How, be how much of an impact player was he? Not really. I mean, he's all right, He's a quarterback. He he's a quarterback that's gotten around. He's more like that bridge quarterback that you don't really. The Eagles. All right, this is gonna give him away. The Eagles signed him because Carson Wentz got hurt and he played in the playoffs. It's not. So he was kind of impact, but like he was only there because Carson Wentz got hurt. It's not. It's not who. Let me check this. Let me check this. Am I right? Am I right? I am right. Oh it's my Josh gosh. McCown. Okay. I was like, yeah. no way. It's not him. Yeah. yeah he played him. for like 7 million different teams. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll do a couple more. So, San Fran 2014 and 2017. Mm. Cleveland 2018. Jaguars 2018. Chiefs 2019. Active player, yes. Offensive player. What the? I'm thinking. Uh, my thought process is on the Chiefs 2019, but also played for the Browns. Right, so... <laughs> so who is who is on the Chiefs right now? Well, kind of right now, possibly. I don't know. Yeah, well, let's say Last Super, Super Bowl Chiefs. Who was on the Jags and then went to the Chiefs? Was it... No, no, it wasn't him. They didn't make a trade for him. He's on the Bears. Oh, current team isn't shown to make it a little more difficult. So he got traded from the Chiefs? Possibly. Difficulty level medium. So 2019 Chiefs... Current team isn't shown. Current offensive player. So he could potentially not be on the Chiefs. Right. I'm gonna just uh, let's go look at this. Oh. Is it one like like you should have known? Yeah, I should have gotten this because I remember reading about the trade after a football game against like Maryville or something. I had a, I picked him up on my fantasy team after the Chiefs traded for or after the Jags traded for him. Uh, he's currently on the Texans. Um, what position? Running back. Running back? Uh, our, our man Juan Parker compared him to Aaron Jones for some reason in the last episode. Oh, shit. Who was it? Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. No. Because, <laughs> yeah, this player totally is equal to Aaron Jones. I know you know this. I do. You know you know this. I feel like I do. Tell me. It's Carlos Hyde. Okay, yeah. All right. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This last one, speaking of Juan Parker, this last one is an easier one. This is the last one we're going to do. So we have Eagles, 2008 to 2013. Redskins, 2014 to 2016. Buccaneers, 2017 to 2018. Current team isn't shown, but it's the Eagles again. Juan Parker said he was going to lead the league in receiving oh, yeah. yards last year. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I kind of figured... Um, 
Once it's because I forgot I forgot he was on the Redskins actually. I remember. But then I remembered he was on the Bucks, and I was like, oh yeah. Yeah. That's, so it's Sean Jackson. Yeah, that's it's Sean Jackson. Jackson. That's All right. A legend. I fi- I kind of I also kind of figured that because of the long stint with the Eagles, I was like, hmm, yeah. what Eagles player is actually that impactful to be around for that long? <laughs> right. I was thinking like Eagles player, and then I saw Redskins, and I was like, I kind of remember him. It was him and Pierre Garcon were the two wide receivers on the Redskins. Yeah. When they were like. Eight and eight every yeah, now year. Now looking back, I remember him on, on the. Yeah, and game. then and then there was his stint with the Bucks, when he was just Jameis's deep ball threat. With, yeah, again, opposite Mike Evans, and then when he went that, back to the Eagles, I remember everyone was, because the Eagles won the Super Bowl, and then he went back with them, and everyone was like, "Oh my God, Deshaun Jackson!" He got hurt. Right. Okay, well that's it for that segment. That was fun. I liked I like those things. I hope fun. I hope he posts more. That's yeah. one. But uh, now we have another little, our last little part of this podcast is gonna be a little uh, a trade game. We're gonna be, we're gonna take the part of GMs and we're gonna say like, okay, I'm the Jets GM, you're someone else's GM. I'm trading Jamal Adams. I want this back, or vice versa. Right. Um, I'll start it off because this one's actually the most realistic one because this has been talked about a while. Right. Um, so I'm the Patriots GM. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm the Eagles GM. You're the Patriots GM. Okay. I'm going to give you a 2021, so this upcoming draft, a second and a fourth round pick for all pro guard Joe Tooney, who they have on the franchise tag right now. They couldn't sign him. Right. This past year, so they, fra- they franchise tagged him, and there's been rumors that he's going to get traded. He's, he's going to get traded. And the Eagles have been like, because Brandon Brooks got hurt. Mm-hmm. So he's out for the year with the torn Achilles. So like the Eagles are the most persistent rumored team to trade for him. So I'm right. the Eagles. I'm giving you a second and a fourth for Joe Tooney, who made – the first team or second team All Pro last year. I wanted to, I wanted the Bills to sign him free agency, but you know, stupid franchise tag. Um, I feel like it, it could be a win for both teams. Uh, yeah, because I mean, like the Patriots like to accrue, but like who's their backup guard? Who are they gonna have for a guard then? If they're gonna lose him. Their offensive line, like the Cannon dude. I can't remember what his last name. Well, I can't remember what his name is, but there's a there's someone sixty one, right guard. I know he's decent. Mm-hmm. They have Isaiah Wood at left tackle. Their center, they had to trade for who was the center we had last year who was on the Dolphins and we started for us. And we traded him for like a fifth-round pick last year to the Patriots. I don't know who you're talking about, but I don't know. Yeah, well, whatever. Some guy who got cut by the Patriots. They had to trade for our center because their center either got hurt or was MIA. And they, So their offense line is shaky right now. So, I mean, I don't know why you would trade your all-pro left tackle or left guard, especially if, like, unless he wants to, like, he's, like, saying, I'm not going to play for I mean, you. Unless there's, like, some seventh-round pick that fans are just like, he's going to be great, like us for uh, that one undrafted Yeah, guy. Trey Adams. Yeah. Okay, that's different, though, because I'm, I'm a big Washington Huskies fan, and I just know him. I've watched him a lot. So he, right. He was supposed to be, like, he was in 20 – I was going to do it for, our, for my prospect profile thing. I was going to have him because in, back in, like, 2016, 2017, he was supposed to be, like, a first-round pick. He was supposed to be, like, the first offensive tackle off the board. And he just died, didn't he? Yeah, well, he had a – tore his ACL, and he hurt his back, was off for a season. Yeah. Uh, so you would t- you'd accept that trade? I would. I don't think Madden would accept it just because I think Joe Tooney's, like, a 90-something overall Madden. Yeah. But in, I mean, Madden doesn't accept a lot of trades, yeah, though. Yeah, Madden <laughs> doesn't take into fact that Joe Tooney wants to get paid and Patriots don't have the money to pay him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you go with one now. All right, so all of mine are basic. I'll start with the Bills-related one. So I'm the Bills, you're the Falcons. Okay. All right? All right. I'm trading you Trent Murphy, mm-hmm. and I want a fourth. A fourth for Trent Murphy. Which draft? This one or, like, the this 2022? One. All right, so I have – I got rid of Vic Beasley. He's on the Titans now. I have Tack McKinley still, but he's been kind of a flop as a first-round pick. So I need a pass rusher. And That's we're trying to – and we'd get rid of him potentially. Because of his cap hit, which is one thing and I'm – And we drafted at FNS. Right. So I'm like – I'm like thinking that because of the cap hit, I might not want to take it because we already have so much cap invested in the quarterback and wide receiver and now running back and offensive line. It's a lot of cap hit. I don't even know if they would fit in their cap. And a fourth-round pick is like – like it's not a high pick, but just there's, there's some starters in the fourth round you can get. Right. But I don't think you can get a starting edge rusher for fourth round pick. I'd say I, I would send the I would reject it, but send you back a counter offer for Trent Murphy for like a fifth round pick, you retain like two million dollars of his salary. Okay. I could potentially see that. You could you could you could see that happening? I could see it. Okay. So I'm gonna go Bills related for my next trade. Okay. D end as well, just okay. not the one you did. Right. I am the Bills. You're the Jets. 
I'm the so it's in division. Yeah. You're giving me Jamal Adams. Oh, okay. I'm giving you Jerry Hughes in the 2021 second. Wow. Um, Maybe a first if you if that's what you want. Um, hmm. Now I don't want everyone to hate me. I'll explain myself in a second. I just want to hear what your reaction is. So you get you get Jerry Hughes in a 2021 first or second, depending on. I'll make it. So if the Bills make the. Uh, if, I, if I was the Jets, I would be asking for at least a first. I'll give you it that the Bills make the AFC Championship game. It becomes a second. If they don't, it's a first. So there's that clause. It's like a, you know what I mean. Like if it, if something happens, they'll have to change the pick. Right. So it's a se- it's a first up until if we make the AFC Championship game. So you, so you as a Jets GM have to calculate in your head. Okay, I'm getting starting the end. Who's 31 years old? Who hasn't had more than nine sacks a year since 2014? Well, keep in mind, it does good in our system. Right. But so it might not go... Well, I mean, you also... Greg Williams is a great offensive defense coordinator, but I mean... True. He, but I mean, so, in, their, in, their system, in yeah, their system... There's nothing guaranteeing that he's going to be amazing. Right. And you get a first-round a first round pick, unless you think I'm going to make the AFC Championship game. If you're the Jets GM, you look at the Bills, you're like, okay, they are or aren't going to make the AFC Championship game. I feel like either way, it would just have to be a first. You should have no. a flat first? Yeah. I might actually yeah. have to do that because if I get if the Bills got Jamal Adams, they're not going to trade in division. Well, let's get that straight right now. Oh, yeah. This isn't going to happen. They're not going to trade <laughs> in division. No. But if they did, McDermott likes to run. So nickel is basically the base defense now. Mm-hmm. McDermott likes the big nickel, which is where basically the nickel cornerback is a safety. So it was like D. Marlowe for us last year. Mm-hmm. That someone who can go up and cover tight ends and running backs out of the backfield, but also step in and make plays against the run. Jamal Adams would be the perfect big nickel. Like, we have Michael Hyde do it a little bit, too. But Jamal Adams is bigger. He's stronger. He'd be the perfect big nickel for us. Mm-hmm. That would make our defense, like, elite. And we have A.G. Epinesa, who, uh, shameless plug, I just did a pro- prospect profile. It should be out coming out in the next couple days uh, on him. I think he's going to be really good. And you have Daryl Johnson, who right. you can use on just purely – A.G. Epinesa could be your – D end on run plays, on like obvious rundowns, and then right. kick inside the deep tackle and have Daryl Johnson on the outside pass rushing on obvious pass downs. Um, so I'm okay with getting rid of Hughes just because we're stacked on the line. I mean, we didn't get a lot of sack production last year, but he was also a part of that. He didn't right. have a lot of pressures. But um, yeah, I just think that I'd be okay giving up Jerry Hughes if I got Jamal Adams in return. Right. So if, okay, so if I changed if it, it, if if it, I, if it was just a flat first. So like Hughes. So he was in the first for Jamal Adams. I would take that. As a Bills GM, as Brandon Bean, I would take that because now right. you have Jamal Adams who wants a new contract. Mm-hmm. That we're just, we're still getting rid of dead money, and Hughes's contract is going to be up in a couple years. He still has a big cap on him. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much the penalty would be, but I don't, I don't, I'd assume it's not horrifically terrible. You can't move him. Right. And I think we can pay Jamal Adams. So I think that would be a good trade for us. I think it'd be a. St- I think if anyone looked at that, it'd would, be a st- would we pay him though? We, I'd say we'd pay him. But and Trey. Ha- oh yeah, it's a thing. And Matt, and Matt Milano, and Deion Dawkins. We might not pay him, but we might just get him just to make the defense extra special, and then weed out who we wouldn't wouldn't pay. Because we might have to let go of Matt Milano, but if you get Jamal Adams, he's basically a weak side linebacker. You can replace Matt Milano. Right. With him. But Matt Milano's really good, so I don't know. Right. All right. So your trade is next. All right, this is my second trade. All right, now this one is one that you're not gonna like. I'm not gonna like it because it involves the Patriots. Oh god! But we're saying OJ Howard going to the Patriots. You get the Patriots. Would you accept it for a third? OJ for a third. I'm giving you a third for OJ Howard. Yes, who is underutilized and isn't valued. As high as I think he should be at Tampa I, Bay. I was when I was I first ever like the first draft I really got into was his draft, and I had him going sixth overall to the Browns. I liked him so much. Mm-hmm. So okay, I have a question. In this reality, did I make the trade for Joe Tooney for a second or fourth? Because mm. if I have two Let's seconds, start and saying no. Start and saying no. I still might give you a third. I might. Because he's contracts coming up. Third round picks are valuable, and the Patriots. But we always trade back in the first round anyway, so we might be able to pick up some more picks. Yeah, I would take it for a third, even without making the trade for Joe Tooney. So I don't have the extra second and fourth. Mm-hmm. I would still make the trade for the third round pick. And then with it would be even more. So it'd be because even. You yeah. Have the two other picks. Right. So without, I'm still willing to give up a third round pick for OJ Howard. 
with the trade, mm-hmm. it's even better because now I'm giving up a third round pick, but I still have a second second, and I have OJ Howard now. Right. And I'm probably gonna trade out of the first like I always do, so I'll probably get even more like I'll, or, I'll or, third, or your dog, or my dog could do it. Yeah. <laughs> team man's drafts now. Yeah. All right. So this is gonna be our final one. This is a biggie. 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 So, great. Now, you're you're Cleveland. Okay. I'm, yeah. You're okay. Cleveland. I'm the Packers. I just drafted a quarterback in the first round. You really yeah, stupid. Unfortunately. Uh, I love the quarterback. Hate the decision to draft him there. Now everyone's roasting me about not taking any skill positions. I drafted a right. running back when we don't when we don't need running back. I didn't draft a single receiver. This was like the stack, the most stacked receiver class of like the past like twenty years. I did not draft a single receiver. So now I'm Even like the Bills drafted two receivers and we just got Stephon Diggs. Right. So we kind of drafted three, kind of. Um, so on the Packers, I feel the heat. I need to get a I need to get a wide receiver. Yeah. I'm gonna give you cornerback Kevin King, who was a second round pick out of Washington the year we drafted Trey. He was like a thirty third overall pick. He's big, tall, lanky corner. Hasn't really figured it out at the NFL level yet. He's like he was with drafted with Jair Alexander, um, or the year before, okay. and or maybe it was the same year. I don't remember. I know he got drafted to the Packers. Ah oh, well. Um, the dog just ate my food. Uh, the he got he, he's, so he's like my number two, number three corner. He isn't. He's not that spectacular, but he has potential. Okay. Twenty twenty one first. And a 2022 first mm-hmm. for OBJ and a 2021 second. Hmm. So the Packers would have Odell Beckham Jr. and Devontae Adams. Yeah, just grab that. <laughs> Put it up on the freezer. Stupid dog. Shanky, did you just threaten my dog with a knife? I did threaten your dog with a knife. You're something else, you know that? I'm good. All right, so you're giving me OBJ and a 2021 second for two firsts. And Kevin King. Um. Hmm. I mean, you have for corner, you have Greedy Williams. Um. And Greedy Williams. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't remember that they, they got rid of Joe Hayden. So I don't remember who the second corner they have is, but I'm pretty sure he's all right. I don't remember exactly who, but I remember him not being like terrible. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. But I, I, I think Kevin King would be an upgrade. If he especially can put it together. So well, it's two firsts as well. Yeah, it's two firsts. So this upcoming draft, you won't have a second, but you'll have two firsts. And then the next year, you'll also have two firsts. So you'll have four firsts in two years. Right. Mm-hmm. And you still have Jarvis Landry. Mm-hmm. You have Jarvis Landry. <laughs> But then you could those two firsts, one of them could be on a good wide receiver. Right. You could flip that first for a wide receiver. You could just draft a wide receiver. Right. There's a lot of things you could do with that. Right. Being but two. knowing the Packers, Aaron Rodgers, with OBJ and Devontae Adams, they're not. It's not. You're not going to get a low first round pick. It's going to be up. It's going to be up there. Mm-hmm. It's going to be like around the 30s, like high 20s. But then will the Browns kind of the Browns the well, one? Right. To well, get I mean. A higher one. Not necessarily tank, but how oh, like, will they do? Right. Do you think the Browns without OBJ would be better, worse, or not much moved? Which was what eleventh overall I pick. I feel like I feel like not much moved, but worse. Maybe so like tenth or ninth. So they wouldn't move down like one or two spots. You're saying? Yeah, it wouldn't be like they're getting like the first round pick. It's not like they're going back to their zero and sixteen days. Right. Like they're still gonna get some wins. I mean, I feel like Baker will kind of take a bit of a step up, better than probably last year. But I mean, he was playing. With OB, he was playing like OBJ didn't have that phenomenal of a year. Right. Like he's still one of the best receivers, but like he didn't be. He wasn't amazing. Right. No, and then you can also say if you have the ninth overall pick and a f- team who already has a quarterback gets the first overall pick, you could package that to get Trevor Lawrence. If you don't like Baker, like Baker and two first round picks for Trevor Lawrence, kind of thing. Even if a team has a quarterback, they they might take that. Right. So that, I, that I that I don't see happening. No, probably not. But I'm saying, like, as the Browns GM right now, in this current day, the, today, yes, would you trade OBJ in a second for two firsts and Kevin King? Mm. I mean, Kevin Stefanski, the head coach, is more of a defensive head coach anyway. So he, I don't know what he values, but right. Mm-hmm. I know that me personally, I value like players that can. 
do multiple things, can that corner, like, fill in different... I mean, you said he's bigger. Yeah, so they said that he's, like, they're looking maybe... People keep saying he should change his safety kind of thing. Or, like, he's big. So he could potentially play both. He could, yeah. But would he be good at both? We can, that's, that's up to you to decide. Hmm. Um, I'd say do it. You would do it? I'd say do it. I mean, I think... I think the backlash to the trade would be initially it'd be I don't know cuz I'm going to say I would, I would, I'm thinking that people would be like oh the Packers are stupid for giving up two first round picks but you have Devontae Adams and Odo Beckham Jr. Right. What else why do you need first round picks? You're going to be in Super Bowls. <laughs> so I don't know. I think that would uh that would be an interesting trade for both teams. I think if Cleveland took that trade they'd basically be saying okay either we don't like Ob- Odell or we're we're expecting to lose again. Right, and I don't... Who's calling me? And I don't... Um, I don't see that happening only because you already know where the Packers are going mm-hmm. as far as... They're, they're looking into the future. They don't care about Aaron Rodgers, and they don't care about right now. We saw that by the fact that they just drafted a quarterback. Right. They traded up toward the quarterback, too. Exactly. They're looking to the future, so I don't think that they are necessarily looking to trade it any of their assets. Yeah, but if you have Jordan Love and he's starting, why, why Jordan Love throwing to Devonta Adams and Odell Beckham Jr. is like you couldn't put a quarterback in a better position. And your whole goal is to still win Super Bowls. Mm-hmm. You have Aaron Rodgers for two years, I guess. You could, well, those two years that you don't have first-round picks, you could just keep Aaron Rodgers let Jordan Love sit and then try to win Super Bowls and then get rid of Aaron Rodgers when you have your first-round pick. And if Jordan Love tanks that season, you get a high pick. You, your first first-round pick in a while, so you get a high pick. If right. not, t- right. you go for another Super Bowl. Right. So I think it would be a win-win. I think it would be more biased towards – I don't know who would be more biased. Cause I feel like more biased towards the Browns. Probably, because they did, they're they having troubles with Odell already. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's I, that was the one I wanted to end on because I thought it'd be the most interesting backlash wise because it's polarizing because right. the Packers would have two elite weapons as well as an elite run game, so their offense would be like Chiefs level good. Their defense is still good too. They had two ten sack players last year, so right. the Packers would be like the team to beat in the NFC if that happened. Mm-hmm. But people might still be and they'd be like, oh, this makes up for the draft, but the Browns. I think it'd be leaning more towards Packers because that's that they'd be more they'd see they'd be seen as the class of the NFC after that. Then, they the Browns would be seen as oh they're giving they're they're punting the season basically they're taking the first round picks, and just trying to not lose many games hope the Packers lose or something like that, right. something along those lines. So I don't know. I, I I out of all these trades, besides like you know the Bills ones with getting Jamal Adams, yeah, I'd probably want to see that one the most just to see how the season would play out. With two, Aaron Rodgers having two elite wide receivers to throw to him. It would definitely make things a lot more interesting. Yeah. Um, too bad he would lose to Drew, Drew Locke in the, in the Super Bowl, though. So uh, that's that's the end of our show. Uh, we had a few different games today. We're, we're looking to get this up by, like, Wednesday, Thursday this week. So we'll have, like, we'll basically have two podcasts in the same week. Um, we have some other videos coming up. We have the prospect profile I was talking about. Um, we have Shock Madden. It's in the works. Uh, we don't know when that's going to be coming out. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to be just consistently putting it up. I ha- I'm going on vacation uh, next week, so we might have to record one before that vacation. Or we might just have a special a special co-host for that day. I don't know. Okay. But uh, we'll, 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 we'll keep you guys updated. Follow our uh, Instagram and Facebook. It'll all be in the description, as well as go on our Spotify, YouTube, uh, SoundCloud, all those different places to stream it or watch it. Um, but besides that, I, I'm, I think I'm done with... I'm done with here. You got anything to say? Um, I have nothing. Just be on the lookout because soon some people are going to get ankles broken. Oh, yeah. Soon. I forgot about that. Some soon. People, some people gonna ankles, ankles are going to be broken soon. And some people are possibly going to be able to see it firsthand. We got some, we got some plans for that. We ha- we do, I forgot we had those plans. We do have those plans. We have plans. It's good stuff. It's, it. <laughs> <laughs> All right.